if you had to invent a fifth season, which two other seasons would you put in between and what would happen in it? <laughs> what a hilarious question. That's just one of the thousand and one questions in Emergency Questions, which is out now. It's the perfect Christmas gift for everyone. If you've enjoyed this podcast and been enjoying it for nothing all this time, why not buy Emergency Questions available from Amazon, Go Faster Stripe, uh, Waterstones and all good bookshops. And also, can I give a mention to our... Sponsor for this series, Beer 52. Uh, you can get eight free craft beers like this cold brew. And uh, there's one with chocolate in it. This is an Oktoberfest special um, for just £2.95 uh, PNP. Uh, then you'll be signed up for getting eight beers a month for £24. But you can unsubscribe anytime, even after you've had your free ones, before you get any paid ones. You also get a little packet of crisps every month. That's my favorite bit about it. And a magazine all about the beers you've, you're gonna have. It's really good, it's good fun. If you like craft beers, they're a bit strong, aren't they? George was saying his friend wanted weaker ones because George hangs around with people who can't take strong beer. Uh, they're very nice beers. It's lots of fun uh, to get different beers every month. Uh, and uh, you will be helping the podcast at the same time. So go to www.beer52.com slash RHLSTP and you can get your own eight beers for just package and posting. Thank you very much. I do come down and see some shows as well. We're at lessquaretheatre.com and you can buy tickets to future shows. Anyway, enough about publicising other stuff. Why don't we sit back and watch another Rahalastapa Rahalastapa with the amazing Ross Noble. Please welcome a man who, despite being a grown-up, spent six hours in a theatre watching a play about a child wizard this week. <laughs> it's Richard Herring! <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you. Welcome. Hello. Welcome to uh, Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre Podcast. Um, I was hanging around with... Um, <laughs> cast of the Double Deckers uh, today. They've grown, they've grown up. They've grown up quite the most. Peter Firth was there, and the other ones. Uh, and uh, uh, they call it Rehearsal. So I don't know if that's going to. <laughs> Who remembers the Double Deckers? You do, don't you? You're a, you must remember. Come on, David. You remember? Help me out with the Double Deckers. Melvin Hayes was he in it? Brinsley Falk. Brinsley thing. Yeah, he was in it. Old Brinsley was in it. <laughs> <laughs> Love that show. Get on board, come on board, come on board with the double deckers. Fun and laughter is what we're after on a London double decker bus. Peter Kay. So I'm Peter, I'm the new Peter K. I'm the Peter K of stuff that people don't remember. So it's, uh, that's my, which is better in a way, isn't it? Because it's the first time you've heard it. I enjoyed that song, thank you. Just no good singing up above the streets and the houses. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Dawn Airy should be fired. That's all I'm saying. Dawn Airy. I listen back. Jeffrey from Rainbow died uh, today, uh, as we're recording this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> sorry to break it, do you? <laughs> Who we worked with uh, on Fist. He did the Fist of Fun radio show uh, 20 years ago. Um, to be honest, I'm amazed he lasted as long as he did. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, I, can't, I genuinely can't believe it. Who would have thought he'd outlived Dale Winton, who was also on that series? I'm not saying it's cursed. <laughs> Um, but uh, they, I've just watched the, the Rainbow. They, they took Jeffrey, they sacked him when he was 51, the same age as me. So suck on that, Richard Herring. You're the clever, <laughs> ironic piss takes of children's TV in the 1990s. You became as old as Jeffrey from Rainbow was when you were taking the piss out of him subtly. Uh, <laughs> and uh, they replaced him with a puppet. And I just watched the first episode. Who remembers Rainbow when Jeffrey wasn't in it? No. You do. Did you, you, you like it? it was they, they replaced him with a puppet. I mean, that's insulting. And Dawn Airy did that. And uh, I think we should replace Dawn Airy with a puppet. That is, that is, 
what we said in the 1990s. Anyway, look, well, I wasn't here to talk about Jeffrey from Rainbow, though I'm very sad about it. He was a lovely man. Um, yeah, sorry, I won't keep mentioning it. Every time I mention him, people go, oh, no. <laughs> I thought he might have come back to life since he mentioned it. No, he's definitely... He's, dead. he's gone for good. Yeah, I'm sorry. He's gone for... Even Charles Aznavour, they're gone. They're gone. People listening to the home going, why are they talking about these long dead people? <laughs> What's going on? Uh, so I did, I went to see the play Harry Potter. My wife loves Harry Potter. I do not like Harry Potter. If you don't like Harry Potter, I've got some advice for you. There's a two part play on in uh, London at the moment of Harry Potter. Uh, go and just see the first one. Because at the end of it, spoiler alert, like Voldemort goes back, they go back in time, which I've got some issues with. Uh, and uh, <laughs> they don't, it's not an effective use of time travel. It's not as bad as sliding doors wouldn't. Good night, sweetheart, but it's bad. Uh, but Voldemort wins and Harry Potter is killed in the battle and Voldemort is the king of the whole world. It's fucking brilliant. Just go and see that first one. I walk out, go, brilliant. Hey, and then you just see one play, which is enough for Harry Potter. It's enough. It's enough Harry Potter, even if you like Harry Potter. Just one play. Apparently it's doing quite well, the play, so... <laughs> but I'd like to see it that is full for the first one and no one at the second one from now on. Let's try and make that happen for just a little Richie. Uh, and, uh, oh, yes, the Emergency Questions book is out. We'll be, we'll be using this during the show, so uh, do go if you're at home, uh, which you probably are, or even if you're not at home, go home and buy it. <laughs> if you're at home, get out of your home and go to a bookshop and buy it, or go online and buy it. If you're not at home, online or a bookshop. If you're in a bookshop while you listen to this, go and ask them for it. And they go, sorry, we haven't got it. Go, can you order it in for me? And they go, yeah, or you just go on Amazon and get it yourself. Oh, yeah, I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the advice. <laughs> How are bookshops, bookshops still going? I don't know, but well done. This people haven't realised. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I'm quite obsessed with Amazon. I, you know, I, I'd like you to buy it from GoFasterStrike.com if you can, but uh, I am also obsessed with my Amazon ranking uh, on this. Uh, I've got up to as far as number five Woo! in the books. Uh, reference fun facts and trivia trivia chart. So that is that's pretty good. Isn't it? That's uh, that's pretty good. Isn't it? Number five in that. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Not. I haven't managed to get into the books reference fun facts and trivia section. But if you go to the books reference fun facts and trivia trivia section, there are no fun facts in this. Uh, is what I'm saying. There's no fun facts to be had. Uh, but there's a there's a book by um, a man called Hugh Jasburn who, I don't think that's his real name. Uh, it's, it's about 52 things to do on the toilet. That's been at number four and three in that chart all the time. And I would just really like, before I die, just to be ahead of 52 things to do on the toilet by Hugh Jasper. <laughs> is, that, is that, am I aiming too high? <laughs> it's not out yet, it might be fine. Uh, so, um... And uh, there's lots of emergency questions. This one isn't in the book, but this is something I did on Twitter this week, which is I asked on Twitter, which two celebrities would you like to see get married to create an amusing double-barreled surname? And I did say to people, I don't want you using ones you've heard before, and it's got to be a double-barreled surname. Still loads of people said, what about Whoopi Goldberg and Peter Cushing? <laughs> that's not a double-barreled surname. That's her full name would be Whoopi Cushing. That is not funny. <laughs> that is not funny, and it's also not your joke. Here are some good ones that I got. Uh, this is from Greg Jenner, previous guest. Uh, Jack Straw and Mary Berry. Yeah, come on! <laughs> this is from Richard Osman. Liz Hurley and Craig Burley, who's a celebrity. Uh, well, I quite like Edward Albee and uh, Johann Sebastian Bach. Bark. Albee Bach. <laughs> uh, I, I, one of my favourites was Andy Serkis and Timothy Oliphant. Uh, just... <laughs> I think the winner was, and it might not have been theirs, was Desmond Tutu and Shania Twain. And that was, that was quite good. I think it might be a Paul Merton joke, though. So, uh, well done, Paul Merton, who's also a previous... Everyone's been on this, haven't they? It's been all right. Oh, I did think of a guy. I had one written down for the cool kids. I had it written down. Lucky I'll use it for the next one. So, uh, it's... <laughs> Right, um, oh, I'll, I'll use the rest of the material for uh, later on. Our guest tonight, uh, oh gosh, uh, is probably best known um, for his appearance on It's a Date, in which he had a date with Harold Bishop from Neighbours, <laughs> Ian Smith. I mean, fuck, I just want to talk about that for the entire hour we've got. Will you please welcome the incredible Ross Noble, ladies and gentlemen, he's back. He's back.
Come in, sit down. Come in. Look at all Hello. this lovely beer. It's do help yourself. I know you don't it? drink, but I do help yourself. Help I'll, yourself I'll for beer. Just put that behind it, so I look like a hard drinking man. Genuinely didn't know about Jeffrey from Rainbow. Didn't you? That's oh, a so wonderful way to find out. <laughs> Backstage there. You'll Luckily, never forget. You never. Not a close personal friend of mine. No. But you know, imagine if he was. Yeah. And I just <laughs> literally was stood back there, and he was like, "Hey, Jeffrey from Rainbow's there!" <laughs> and I literally came out crying. It'll be amazing. I'm yeah. very upset. He was a lovely. He was a lovely man. He was happy to join yeah. in with our mistake of him. It was nice. Um, what is yeah. this? What's this? Can, har- what's this? Har- can I tell? Remind what, r- later. Uh, do, do that. But right. remind me to tell you the story about me finding out about somebody I know being dead. Okay. Just before. <laughs> Stop the clock. Write okay. that down. Okay. We'll get to that. Okay. At a later stage. I have to ask you about. Somebody clapped there. Somebody <laughs> started. A, and I hope that because oh, that'd be good. Or. Or it's somebody that either loves minute taking, <laughs> some sort of uh, company secretary, go, oh, I love this, I love this. Or it's somebody who's into time travel and's gone, oh, that's something to look forward to in the future. <laughs> Imagine if I hadn't seen Harry Potter. <laughs> Luckily, I have. I know, so I have ruined the first part yeah, of Harry Potter. Absolutely but don't worry, it. they go back in time again and they fix it all yeah. using magic. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I said to my wife, it doesn't really matter what happens, does it? Because magic. Oh yeah, yeah. That's... Yeah, but for those of you that aren't planning to see, what happens is Voldemort's there, and this wormhole in time appears, and just a finger comes out <laughs> and just just prods him like that, and that, and it ends. It goes. Yeah. It and goes then, in uh, his eye. Then and Nicholas, goes, oh, I can't see. Nicholas Lindus turns up and fucks Helena Bonham Carter. That's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. So yeah. tell me about you having a date with Harold Bishop in a yeah. TV. Yeah, uh, Smith. Well, the thing is, when we were filming it, everyone referred to him as Harold all the time. <laughs> and we were going, he's called Ian. And then people would go, hi, Ian. Like that. <laughs> were, hi, hi, Ian. Like that. Yeah, it was a, so it's an uh, Australian uh, series. And a friend of mine's like the showrunner on it. And he said, do you want to write one of these episodes and be in it. And it's basically like, uh, people go on a date and then, uh, yeah, and it's, it's like a comedy thing and then the date can go well, it can go badly, uh, it can be anything you want it to be. Now, here's the thing, right? I could have picked any Australian actress like out there, right? <laughs> I literally, they had some amazing people in the show, right? And I could have gone, right, who's the hottest woman I could go on a date with? And I thought, you know what would be funnier? is if I played a homosexual gentleman <laughs> and I went on a homosexual date and then I thought, mm, who could my love be, right? <laughs> and then I turned to my mate Pete and I just said, um, it's going to be Ian Smith. And he went, Harold, off of Nearbus. <laughs> and I went, shit, yeah. And the two of us laughed for about an hour. And then he... Um, and I started formulating the idea for the story and then um, he sent an email to his producer while we were sat there and like within 40 minutes he went, Harold says as long as it's not homophobic, he's in. <laughs> Boom! So I had so to it. rewrite it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm totally joking. <laughs> I'm completely, that is a joke. And... Uh, <laughs> and he said, uh, and then we, uh, and then we wrote the thing, and then, uh, and I just, we were sat there and we're going, yeah, no, because you know he's known as Harold. Yeah. So I, I said, you know what this is? This is Ian Smith's Pulp Fiction. That's <laughs> what this is. And then we just kept referring to it as Ian Smith's Pulp Fiction. And then he turned up, and then we filmed it. And there was a moment where, because there's all these like sort of flash sort of just short dream sequences in it as well. And there was a moment where I was dressed in a full flamenco outfit and he was in a flamenco outfit. It wasn't homophobic and though. It was, no, it was, they weren't camp <laughs> outfits. They were just, you know, it was this sort of flash forward thing. And we were on a big green screen in the studio and I had a rose between my teeth and the two of us were flamenco dancing. You know you have those moments where you go, oh, I've gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's so funny because it's impossible not to call him Harold, you know. <laughs> and uh, what was it? He said something like, "In one point, he called me like a dirty little bitch." I think it was, <laughs> and he just 
And he went, oh, you dirty little bit like that. And the, and the whole crew, and I changed it at the last minute. There was a line in the script. I said, right, say this instead. And he did it on camera. And everyone just started like, pissing themselves laughing. And we had to do it about five times because yeah. the crew couldn't stop laughing. Did you so, have to kid, did you share a kiss? Uh, did we kiss? Uh, yeah. yeah. I think you'd remember, wouldn't you? But that was a lot. <laughs> 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 he kept calling me Marge, which I thought was odd. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't. <laughs> it was such good fun, though. It was just we had a, yeah, it was a whole set. It was in a bowling alley. It was proper. It's proper production. It was just tracks and everything. Oh. So you've been writing a lot because I I was in a short film that you wrote as well. I felt yeah. like you only put me in as a joke for you and your friends. <laughs> Adam Yorkin, Richard Herring will make no, it. No, no, because I did put you in there for several reasons. One, because the airfare for Ian Smith was too much for us. <laughs> and I thought, who's a similar type? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Absolutely joking. Uh, no, I did put you in partly because I listen to this podcast yeah. and you're always complaining that nobody puts you in they stuff. In I wanted to ruin your joke. <laughs> I don't think did anyone see it. It was very good, actually. It was a very. It was thanks. It was a sort of joke within a joke. It was, no, it was, a, joke, it was it? a headmaster, and uh, I did. To be fair, you were my second choice. Okay, <laughs> it was the first, it was the first choice. Nick Frost. That's always my. I was like, no. that's, that's what I was going to talk to Amanda about. Uh, but uh, no, it, it wasn't. Who Nick was Frost. it? It was somebody you would not expect. Okay. Was it? Um, no, bear in mind, it was a, you were playing was de it? deputy headmaster. I tell you, one job I got, they told me who it nearly was went to, and it went to. Um, it was going to be Justin Lee Collins. Was be <laughs> this was before the trouble. So if, it was, if, it was, if it was Justin Lee Collins, then that's an insult. Yeah. Was it Justin Lee Collins? It, it wasn't, no, but he did. He's, <laughs> he's been cleared of all charges now. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> was it I Jim Davis? <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those things where they said, I said, look, if he says no, we've got to get Richard to do it. And they went, well, he's definitely had some sexual misappropriate stuff. The and other guy they're yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they said, and with, with Richard, it's 50 50. <laughs> so, what? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, oh, um, right. he had a little bit of trouble, but yeah. he's fine now. We haven't told us who it is yet. Alan Jones. <laughs> it was only with a snowman, it's fine. Uh, it's, uh, you're allowed to with a snowman. He sang We're Wanking in the Air. That, was the air. that, that house, it wasn't even Christmas time. That was just. It was literally all jizz, the whole. The whole thing. The jizz man, then. So it was, it was a just, man made just, out of jizz. No, no wonder he came to life. The jizz man! <laughs> Can you imagine? You'd just be there with your friend, the jizz man, and it, like, it would be fine as long as, he, as, long as it remained at, at, at zero. If we go, this is fine. But as soon as it starts getting a bit warm, you think, no, no, like that. <laughs> No, I think there was. I think I think it was fine, wasn't it? Yeah, it's fine. I so we can say he was accused of stuff, but it turned out. No, I think it was. No, no, I think. I think it was like he'd been on a TV show and he maybe said something inappropriate. Yeah, I think it was very whatever it was was very minor. And he was, minor. He was completely cleared. Exonerated. He's an innocent man. Innocent man, but he couldn't do it because he was touring around cathedral. <laughs> Singing, so I said, "Who could possibly play a deputy headmaster?" And I then, had a moustache. And then you did, yeah, and it was it was, it was a it was a beautiful moment where Richard was sat there and we was on set. That's what they call it. Yeah, we was on set, and uh, you just had a moment where you realised that you were your father. Yeah, you? my dad was a headmaster and a deputy headmaster yeah. before that. And yeah, having and, a bit and of a was... freak out. Yeah, it was but weird. yeah, you were very good in it, and Thank I you. thought you were shamefully overlooked yeah, for the, uh, the acting awards. Yeah, the acting awards. Yeah. No other job offers have come flooding in. Oh, it's disappointing. Yeah. yeah. I was hoping I was going to kick it off on yeah, something. Yeah. People would see you in that and then just go, he's the man, yeah. and then you'd be off on a sort of Tim from the office style <laughs> of set. <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then you'd have to come on here yeah. and go, oh, I was on another Hollywood film. <laughs> and I'd be, I'd be sitting at home Thanks listening to, to the podcast Dope. going, ah! <laughs> 
<laughs> I've made you successful. But <laughs> didn't work, did it? No, didn't work. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, look, so while I remember, I'll do my thing that I wanted to t- tell you about just a little... For the last time, you, I've listened back to the... Um, to the, the podcast we did five years ago. Can you believe it? Five, it was five ago. years ago. Both young men. And uh, I've got to find. Oh yeah. So I'll tell you what. Right. See that? That's all because of Atten, brother. Yeah. <laughs> it's all because of him. Paper straws. Because yeah. of all them. So on the podcast <laughs> five years ago. Which is ago. ridiculous because if you were a dolphin, that you get a straw up your blowhole. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> they could <can> still breathe. <laughs> On the podcast, I'm joking. <laughs> Somebody went Ooh. five years ago before I had Ooh. any children. Oh, yeah. I was trying to have kids, but yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. wasn't working. I thought yes. it was never going to happen. Uh, we talked about Doctor Who, did we? Uh, and um, Mike Eve two years ago on the YouTube uh, video uh, wrote this. Uh, Bertie Bassett, aka the Candyman, was oh, yeah. in the Happiness Patro- Patrol, not Paradise Towers, like you claim. Oh yeah, yeah, that was yeah, yeah. And Nicholas Parsons was in the Curse of Fenric, not Time and the Rani, Noble's tenuous grasp of the McCoy era. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely ruined what was otherwise a very entertaining chat. Shame, shame, yeah. shame yeah. on you, Ross yeah. Noble. And I like the fact that you've had that note on your phone for five years. <laughs> I love the fact, as you were saying that, somebody down there was going, yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's probably, yeah, uh, that's probably him. It's probably, I'm that's excited. Not Mike Eve. I'm excited about the new Doctor Are Who. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. Very excited. Yeah. And, I, and I think these idiots, you know all these idiots are going on about, oh, it's going to be a woman and all the rest of it. Yeah. I think, is it a woman? Or has is Doctor... It just another man? No, has Doctor Who always been a woman, yeah. but in the body of a man. Mm. Maybe it's time we seriously discuss trans issues <laughs> right <Yeah>. now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please don't, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, well, no, Do you know what I, mean? Mean? I think it's very exciting. So it's maybe good. it's a, like, you know, I don't know what the term is and I'm not gonna use any yeah. of them. <laughs> for, <laughs> for fear of walking along a tightrope that <laughs> I can all, that I can not only not balance on, yeah. I don't understand. It is best just to shut up. That's why, as you get older, it's best just shut up. Yeah. <laughs> just don't but as we've learned yeah. in, in modern times, that's not what people do. So let's crack on. <laughs> so, yeah, so maybe that's what's happening with Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's all I'm saying. So. Well, you know, it's not important. Again, it's like Harry Potter. Whoa! Richard Herring said trans issues are not important. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, no, I think it's very exciting. I think she's going to be very good. And yeah. Doctor, it's like Harry Potter. It's just made up for kids. Stop being ridiculous about it. It's, she can, he, she can change into uh-huh. anything he or she wishes. <laughs> he or she. Or they. You're just, yeah. They. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's just the same. Everyone's the same. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Some people you... are better than other people, but uh, <laughs> definitely not white men. Definitely not white men. De- we're definitely not the best ones. <laughs> not, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore, eh? <laughs> oh. that's, yeah. yeah, I tell you who yeah. uh, is the un- white men. That's who it is now. What, just, getting all the yeah, we, we, should yeah. be, we should have the... When's there an International yeah, Men's Day? exactly. <laughs> It'll be good. I'm looking forward to it. So let's uh, let's ask an emergency question, All which right. might be where we come into this podcast. Uh, so <laughs> the new emergency questions book. Um, okay, let's let's try this one. Right. Question two seven two. If you're following at home <laughs> of the new version, this is the new version book. Yeah. Would you rather have dandruff that doubled up as an acceptable substitute for ground coriander? <laughs> Or smegma that tasted like the most delicious cottage cheese. Well, I would say, yep. I would say the second one would certainly make it more acceptable, getting your knob out at a farmer's market. <laughs> <laughs> and that is always what I'm looking for in life. <laughs> yeah. When I get up in the morning, I think, how can I, how can I get away with this? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
the days of popping it in a bat <laughs> and pretending you're offering it to a small person in a trench. How did he get one? <laughs> How did he get a trench? <laughs> Somebody... A, I tell you, political gorillas now. Stuff. You can't even get your cock out. At a farmer's market now. <laughs> Thanks to bloody women. All the women, the feminists. Oh, yeah, there'll be all sorts of trouble. We can't get our cocks out at a farmer's market. Unbelievable. Well, talking to farmers, well, it's about farmers time. markets. 490, what is the worst thing that a cow has done to you? Ever had oh, any instance ooh, with a cow? Worst thing that a cow's done to me. Uh, I used to have cows. I used to yeah. have four cows, pet cows. And uh, one of them nudged me against an electric fence. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just went like that. I don't think yeah. it was malicious or anything, but just a bit of a, like, a, oof, like that. Sounds a bit like, hey, this guy's been keeping us behind this electric fence, so let's give him a taste of his own medicine. That's you're it sounds like to you're me. assuming I'm keeping them behind the electric <laughs> fence. Yeah. Maybe I, was, I had an electric fence to stop uh, rustlers getting in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. the electricity was only on the other side of the fence, yeah. away from the yeah. cows. The cows uh -huh. could nudge up against it. Yeah, and but, anyone but for some reason, during this incident, you both popped over the other side of the fence. <laughs> I didn't see how hard they nudged me. <laughs> they nudged me over, over the fence, and then I landed on it. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, my wife got sat by it while she was having a piss. <laughs> That was funny. She was, she was having a piss. She was a little bit too good. Because, yeah. you know, as a bloke, it's that thing of... People think if you piss on an electric fence, you're going to get yeah. zapped. That's not the case. Because there's, there's actually a break in the urine. OK. It's like if you, if you film yourself pissing... Yeah, I'm going to. With a, with I'm going to do it now on my phone. <laughs> it got to the stage where a man can't urinate on hey. stage in his own podcast. Oh, no, yeah, so, yeah, she was having a, she's having a little wee, uh, yeah. and, um, yeah, just, like, a bum just touched the, oh. touched the fence. And how much electricity, because I've got some of those near my house, I've never mind, our dog's what, been electric. pissing women? No. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. God. Since he's the... moved into the area, he's got a whole herd of pissing women. He's just, every morning he comes out whistling, come on, come on, come on, like that. And he come running down with their knickers around their legs like that. Very much know, that. It's, it's the most horrible episode of Country Fire. <laughs> um, I've got some electric fences near my house. What? My dog has walked into one of them, but right. I have never touched them. They, does it give you a proper shock? Uh, there's a, a, a low charge. There's a... Tuck, 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 they sort of yeah. take, they go... Tuck, 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 and then they, they surge. Right. So there's a, there's a low level one, so you go, ooh, like that. But then there's the big zap. So you either get like a, like a little... Ooh, like yeah. that, where you get the full... So it's all about timing, really. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> if, you're, if you're ever trying to break into a, a military facility... Then you've just got to get the timing right, <laughs> right. to to break in. What what are the what, around your house? What are yeah. the? It's like a secret lab or something, is it? There's uh, there's horses in fields. Oh right. Yeah. Yeah. I think they don't want people to get in or get out of the fields, so they put electric fences on them. Yeah. Rabbits, they're in there. It's nice. They can't stop the rabbits. It's, beautiful. it's very beautiful where I live. Stop the rabbits. They can't. They can't they stop the rabbits. Go under. They can't stop the rabbits. <laughs> they can't stop them. Um, tell us about your dead story. Let's let's go into that. Your story of oh yeah, yeah I've yeah. written down. So, so let's this get that is done. oh this is a bit sick now. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> so this, no. <laughs> I'm literally. I just went. Oh, there's a thing. And then now I've had time to ruminate. Yeah. I think. Might be in a <laughs> Okay, let's move no, on. No, no, I'll, 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 tell, I'll tell Let's you give anyway. it a go. We can always just cut yeah. this down. To... Do you think this Hello, be... it's Ross Noble. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ross. Beep. No, no, don't beep it like that. Or they'll think we've got a person in a coma who's just... <laughs> the... Beep. Um, that's what I would do if, I, if one of my family was in a hospital and the heart monitor was on. I would deliberately pause as it beeped to pretend I was swearing a lot. So they'd be in the coma like that. And because they could hear the beeping, beep, beep, beep. And I'd stand there going, wake up, you king. And it'd be like, I was. That would, pro that would probably bring them round. Yeah. Let's hope that happens. Let's, let's, yeah. hope, let's hope that can. It's better. The boy zone. <laughs> 
They do that, don't they? they do. Boys Zone travel yeah. around hospitals. Travel around hospitals. Even China. to people who don't like Boys Zone. They yeah. go, come on, it's hospitals. <laughs> come on, you can pull through. Uh, yeah, so I was doing... Uh, so I was doing... A, I was in the... Over the road there, I was doing uh, Young Frankenstein, the musical uh, yes. in London's Fashion West End, and I was with the... Uh, the incredible, I'm going to say incredible, she's truly an incredible human being, uh, Leslie Joseph. Oh, yes. Um, not, not, not Dame Leslie Joseph, which I think is a, is a crying shame. It's about time. Yeah. Because uh, she's really quite an extraordinary individual. Uh, individual? Uh, individual. And she, there was one day she was talking to me, and she sort of doesn't finish one thought before the next one. She can imagine how a conversation between Leslie and I goes. There was... <laughs> And we stood there. One day she came and she went, oh, 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 I'm full. And I went, you're right. And she went, I've eaten two weeks of an advent calendar. <laughs> it's incredible, right? And then uh, she, she went, I was only going I was, I was to have the first of the month and I've gone for it. <laughs> they were lovely. And uh, another time she just turned to me and just out of nowhere she went, what was that island I got trapped on with John Nettles? <laughs> <laughs> Like, incredible. Like, she makes me laugh more than any other human being on the planet. There was one day, so she was talking about, uh, she, she was uh, she's talking about this, this woman who'd been run over. It was on the news. And she was in all seriousness, but she didn't finish one thought, and then she moved on to the next one. And she went, um, she went, it was absolutely, absolutely terrible. This, this young girl, she stepped into the road, and this, uh, this young boy on a bike went straight into her, and she was killed instantly. Would you like a wine gum? <laughs> <laughs> What? And uh, so there's a bit in the show. Why am I telling this publicly? So there's, there's a bit in the show. This is terrible in respect to the dead person's family. The, um, so Hopefully the, they're not listening. There's a bit. Well, they're dead, aren't they? And, uh, <laughs> the, the family. Oh, the family. <laughs> anyway, so we were... Oh, God, this is wrong. Um, so we were just about to go on stage, and there's a scene in the, in the show where... Uh, I played uh, the hunchback and uh, she was playing Frau Blucher and, and they go into the lab and the doctor and his assistant are up on this, uh, they, they've been on this lab table and they've gone up into the roof of the, the lab and their coats have fallen down and they walk in there looking around and they find the coats and they're up there and the scene starts with Frau Blucher going, doctor! And I was going, Inga! And the two of them walking around the lab going, doctor, Inga! Doctor, Inga, like that. And then they look up and they see the thing, right? So I was literally stood there waiting to go on. I'm all hunched, I'm ready to go. And she turns around and, and it's like, and the music goes, Doo -doo -doo, and that's our entrance, right? But I would say about, we had three seconds before we had to walk onto the stage and she went, Sean Hughes, dead at 52. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, she, uh, dead, dead at 52. Doctor, Inga, Doctor. <laughs> Literally, the second before I went on stairs, I was like, Oh, man. Thanks. That's not very nice, is That's it? It's not going in, is it? Nice. That story. No, that, well. Yeah. Oh. Been a sad, it's been a sad day. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> it's been a sad day. But anyway, we should talk about them because you've been in a couple of Mel Brooks uh, productions since I've seen you last on, on this stage, at least. Uh, so, well, that's, yeah, so, so do you, do you meet, do you, have you met Mel and, and hung out with Mel Brooks? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the first one I did, I did producers, and that was uh, that was like touring around. That was a touring production, and he'd long long since he'd long. Since, where's he going? <laughs> Look at that. Deeply offended. Might be, might be. Deeply offended. <laughs> by Deeply everything. Uh, yeah, so he'd long since uh, finished that, and then uh, but this one was uh, no, he'd rewritten it all, so he came over and was he was in the rehearsals and right. so I met. I sent the tape off, the, you know, like put it on tape first, and uh, and then he said, "Oh, Mel wants to talk to you on the phone." I thought it'd be like five minutes or something, two hours. I was on the phone. Right. I would say about ten minutes of that was talking about the what I did, and the rest of it was him just telling showbiz stories. Right. I was going, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah, no, go on, go on," <laughs> and. Uh, and yeah, and then he came over and he did, uh, he was in the rehearsals, he was there every day, and he used to, every day, he'd just kick the door of the rehearsal room open, and didn't matter what we were doing, and he'd just walk in like that, and he'd go, no, no, you're ruining my show! <laughs> <laughs> didn't matter what you were doing. And then, uh, yeah, and we did, 
Um, and you go, Mel, can I ask you a question? And you go, no, you can't have more money. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's just hilarious. He did this thing, we're out, we're out, we're out for dinner one night, and, I, and like he always pays, you know, and he sort of, uh, he, he, like, whenever he gets the bill, he always, like checks the bill, and he goes, uh, I don't, I don't have the bill. He opens it up and he goes, oh my God, oh, too much, too much, oh my God. And, uh, and I put my credit card to the waitress and said, make sure, like, don't let him pay. And he went over, I could see him arguing with the waitress. He turned around and most people would go, oh, thanks for paying for dinner. He didn't have to. And he, he shouts across the whole restaurant. He goes, Ross, are you fucking kidding? I got way more money than you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like that all the time, constantly. So yeah, so he was in the rehearsal room for like, we did like six weeks or something. And then he was here for three months. Right. And he just stared. Uh, yeah, it's just non-stop, just sort of like, so it was all day and then we'd do the show and then we previewed up in Newcastle. So he came up to Newcastle. So it was that weird thing. It was just like, there's Mel Brooks in Newcastle. It's quite a weird, um, yeah, but he, so yeah, he was around and um, there was one night he did this thing. We were, oh God, this is a long story. Right, let's, I'll go as quick as I can. It's right. okay, we've got here all the time. So we've got to fill it. Got, as long as it's so, not offensive, we've got yeah. quite a lot of time to fill in this one. <laughs> So there's a line in the show where Frau Blucher, uh, Les Joseph, says, uh, talking about uh, the original uh, Victor Frankenstein, and says, uh, uh, he said, let's play croquet. I carried his, uh, was it, he carried his hoops and ballots, and I carried his balls, right? It's a classic Mel Brooks line, right? <laughs> and Mel, he, he said, he goes, what you gotta do? You gotta do it. He goes, and I carried his balls. I carried his balls like that. And Leslie went, I carried his balls. And he went, no, I carried his balls like that. <laughs> he had a very specific way. And he goes, you got to do it just enough. I carried his balls. She went, I carried his balls. He went, no, like this. I carried his balls. But don't go balls. You got to go, I carried his balls like that. It's obsessed with it. Obsessed with the tiniest details. Like, he's, there's a bit where I had to say, uh, what a pair. And he goes, no, it's what a pair. And I go, what a pair. No, what a pair. <laughs> what a pair. What a pair. Listen, what a pair. And I go, what a pair. No, what a pair. <laughs> What a pair. No, what a pair. No, what a pair. That's it. Do it exactly like that. What a pair. Okay. So he's, like, he's obsessive about these tiny little rhythms and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, there's one night we did Q&A after the show. And it was all like MasterCard, you know, like competition winners. Or like you pay to, you know, come and see this Q&A. And we're doing it like that. And they don't know that Mel's in the theatre, right? And like, it's one of those things where nobody enjoys being Mel Brooks, like enjoys being who they are more than Mel enjoys being Mel Brooks, right? <laughs> so like, we're doing all this Q&A and all the rest of it. And then he just pops up out of one, like in one of the boxes and he goes, that's right, it's me, come on, here I am. Okay, okay, get your phones up, take a photo. <laughs> it's just like, but he's like, it's all the time. And he's just like, it's like we were another time we were in a restaurant and he goes and he had a hat on and glasses trying not to get recognised and somebody rec recognised me and he jumped up like that, took his glasses off and went, what about me? <laughs> what are you? What? <laughs> you? You're wearing that as a disguise. <laughs> I normally charge a lot of money for this. You can get it for free. Take a photo. Anyway, so he comes up on stage and it's one of those things where you sort of, all right, and like, you think, oh, brilliant. And, and part of you, it's just brilliant because he's just going, you know, because he's just on all the time, you know? And he goes, uh, and he walks up on stage and he just, and then he just, all of a sudden, because this is like after the, the show, and I, he just remembers that there's certain jokes that he wants to talk about. And he completely disregards the fact that, uh, so he's making these people laugh. And then he just goes, oh, I've got these notes I want to give. And he turns around, he goes, I got notes, I got notes. <laughs> We're thinking, now's not really the time <laughs> to be discussing the ins and outs of the show. And the audience, you've never seen a room full of people more confused. He turns around to Leslie and he goes, Leslie, you gotta go harder on the balls. <laughs> 
<laughs> and she went, yes, my heart's on the balls. Hard on the balls. <laughs> the audience was just like, Oh, he's great, oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, I spent spent like yeah weeks and weeks just with him, you know. Yeah, he's yeah. just like like, but he's a jet. You sort of like forget, you know. It's that thing of, he's like this sort of. You think, oh yeah, he's this little old man, you know, nice little. And then you go, oh god, it's my. You just sort of keep remembering, you know. Yeah, yeah. And in re in the rehearsals, he'd sit like this, this close, and you'd be going through it. And if he liked it, he'd be like. If he didn't like it, he'd just sort of tap his head like that. And then, like when he did, he'd just fall about laughing. And then you go, <laughs> "You wrote these jokes, Do you know what I mean?" <laughs> but, but yeah, just that's just brilliant. And he just like he just sort of like he sort of look at stuff, and then he just change. He just start rewriting it, and then yeah. And then at one point, when we were up in Newcastle, just while we were previewing. Oh no, was it? it was down here, yeah. No, it's just before press night. And he kept changing stuff, and kept changing stuff, he was trying to make it funnier and funnier. And then uh, the director turned to him and just went, and they've worked together a lot. And he just went, she went, that's it, Mel. We're not changing any more jokes. And he went, and he, he just said, no, no, no. Oh, fuck it. If, if I can't change any more jokes, I'm going to Paris with Alan Yentop. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Yentop didn't even know about it. Didn't even know him. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to pass with Alan Yentop. Find me his number. Find yeah. out if he knows who I am. Yentop, we're going. We're going to Paris. I've got some stuff to do. I've got to do Imagine. No. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but a genuine, bona fide legend, genius. And how did you find? Obviously, you know, obviously your stand-up shows are, are pretty on the fly and unscripted, and you can do what you like. How was it working every night and having to? It's brilliant. Well, that that was the fun thing about it was it was so tightly. The first, when I did the producers, that was a bit looser, but because of the because the the because he's so obsessive about all the comedy, and uh, Susan Strom and the director, because she's like. Yeah, because she's like a choreographer and a dancer herself, and like she likes everything to be. So it was basically just like taking a thing, and then we were just Hadley Fraser who played uh, played the Doctor. We sort of like his double act. So we just spent like every night we were just honing it and honing it and honing it, and just getting it to the point where we just finding all the tiny. Little... So it was actually for me. It was great because right. it was that thing of like you go right tonight that let's see if we can get that and just you know so yeah and you were nominated for an Olivia Award for oh no, I mean I don't like to talk about <laughs> it, but, uh, yeah I was yeah but I'm uh, fucking Hamilton what <laughs> <laughs> not not bitter at all yeah it was but it's amazing the nomination is like an amazing as well they give some yeah. you know I got a certificate did you <laughs> got a certificate yeah. that's a kick in the balls isn't it <laughs> do you know what I mean I mean I was not. That's a mad thing. I was never expecting an <laughs> Olivia Award uh, nomination in the first place. And then you start going, you go, oh, okay, if, if I win this, and this is the bad thing. I wasn't thinking, oh, this will establish me as the elite of musical theatre. I was thinking, they give you a little king. <laughs> yeah. they, they give you a little bronze king. And I thought, I'd like a bronze king. Yeah. It's like a Norris Olivia action figure. Yeah. But didn't get it. Could be Hamilton, the start of a chessboard if you get a win enough. Oh, imagine yeah. that. I bet Judy Dench, she's got like a you full... Need, you need the full set of Oscars for the pawns. Yeah, and that's he true. And the king. Well, that's what, that's what Mel's office is like. He's right. literally like, in his office, it's just behind him, it's just this <laughs> desk and it's like that. And it's just Emmy, Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, just this big pile of, yeah. But I've got a certificate. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> I won the What's On Stage Award. So that's, it's not, yeah, that's all right. You know, it's not, but, did you get uh, a trophy for that? I did, but nobody's given it to me oh, yet. So, can't so I should, chest, should probably have a, a little look at it. Yeah. But yeah, that was great. Oh God, you know, because you know that weird thing of like, you know, comedy awards and that. I know this sounds like a really arrogant thing to say, but with comedy awards, you go, yeah, but, yeah, fine. I expect to win them. But I never <laughs> expected to win the, you know, get these, it's musical theatre, song and dance, man. <laughs> Brilliant, loved it. But I couldn't go to the awards because I was on tour. Yeah. So, just as well. Yeah. Still, I sit there with my certificate. <laughs> Oh look! I meant you can't have a drink. You don't. Do you, do you, do you used to drink, and nope, then you've given, never, never drunk. Never drunk. Never taken the old uh, nose cocaines. The, the, the old, 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 old nose cocaines. No. 
No, no. never, never been, uh, never been up my street. All of that. Because even though on the last that podcast you said you were you never had cocaine, loads of the comments on YouTube and it were, yeah, that's what you have when you take too much cocaine. <laughs> uh, so, but because you don't need to, you don't need to take any kind of drugs. You like this already? Yes. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, I've if heard, you, but I've heard it's good. It, beer is really good. <laughs> if you like it's... beer, you can get uh, eight free beers from beer52.com slash if you put slash Rahulastapa on the end. This one's called Vanilla Killer. Uh, it's actually uh, full of poison. <laughs> I didn't realise till I drank it. It's uh, a Russian nerve agent. <laughs> but it tastes really good. Uh, they're strong, though. George's friend, George the sound guy's friend, was going, "Oh, it's a bit too strong for me," because his, you know, his friends are a bit. <laughs> um, can't take the drink like I can. I'm not really drinking at the moment either. So this is uh, I'm I'm quite uh, drunk on half a bottle of vanilla killer. And, and is the idea from that, House. Is the idea that you get the look at that? What's that? Yeah. Tannin Zaffel. Yeah, exactly. You Tannin. get eight different craft beers every month. You, the first lot's free, and then you can you know you can join up, get these free ones, and fuck off. Yeah. Beer Fifty Two haven't thought it through. They don't know that I'm going to say, just take the free ones, then leave. I think they'll think you're going to forget, and you probably will, because you'll be drunk eight of these. <laughs> but it's eight, eight a week. No, eight a month, so it's every month, I think. Oh. That's why I think it's weird it's called Beer 52, because it sort of implies it's going to be every week, right? 52 weeks It's 52 a year. weeks in a year. That's what I, that was my maths. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but it's eight a beer, month. beer 12. Uh, yeah, maybe it works out if you do eight. Maybe it's one a... <laughs> two. No, it's two a week, isn't it? Five weeks and some months, uh, but that's one, probably one like point. you have a dry week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if what what about this is an idea yeah. for beer fifty two? Yeah. Why not tap into the lucrative alcoholic market? Yeah. Right. <laughs> People who have genuine substance abuse problems, yeah. right? And then, right, send them the beers, yeah. but each week send them one less. <laughs> <laughs> you see, and then. By Christmas, they've got their life back on track. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just water them it. down. If everyone got their beer from Beer 52, yeah. and then just it was beer to begin with, and then just increasingly, Slowly, slightly, slightly less yeah. alcohol in them, they'd think, oh, I'm drinking more. And then everyone's, everyone's off. They're not drinking they could, anymore. If they had any... In many ways, I'm like the new Russell Brand. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that one. That's a Choco Stout from Germany. You won't be able to get these after March next year, but this is uh, these are all from Germany. <laughs> Yeah, but hang on. If checkers, is it is it checkers goes through? Oh yeah, the checkers is going to go through. Checkers, you'll be checkers allowed right to through. you'll be allowed to drink a big straw. <laughs> you'll be somebody will be able to hold that out the Eurostar, and you'll you'll be able to just you'll be able to drink it. Yeah. They'll pour it into like you know those things that they used to have where they drop the mail off on the old the old in the old west. Yeah, it'll be like that. That's yeah. under checkers. Yeah. So you've got to push for that. It's good they put that in. Uh, <laughs> That's all going well, isn't it? That Brexit. It's going really well. <laughs> it's going great. Uh, it's, it's going to be fine. I think some it's, beer uh, is better than no beer. That's <laughs> what beer fifty two. They do say that, but be. I say no beer is better than some beer. That's what I say. Yeah. That's why I'm very much behind hard Brexit, no deal, hard Brexit. That's why. Is that what you're going yeah, for I'm, now? I'm, I'm right behind it. We might as well. I mean, yeah. we've come this far. Yeah. That's just. Well, we I keep want... going off a cliff edge, but as long as it's a British cliff. Yeah. As long as it's, <laughs> as long as it's beachy head. I think anyone that says we're not going off a cliff is disrespecting Beachy Head. <laughs> and they're the very cliffs that Vera Lynn sang about. <laughs> so, yeah, come on, get behind it. Yeah. Also, if, it, if we do no deal hard Brexit, then all the people who voted to leave can't complain. But if anything is, they can go, yeah. Oh it's, be, oh, it's because you compromised very slightly with the European. That's why it hasn't worked. So, to make it. Why do It has to really go down the toilet. A lot of us will have to die. And Menace won't have any food or money. But when we come out of it in 70 years' time, we can go, see, you were wrong. It was definitely, it was definitely wrong, and it was your fault. Why You're 52%. Don't, why don't we start pushing, instead of a hard Brexit, <laughs> yeah. why don't we start a campaign for an extra hard Brexit? <laughs> yeah. Super hard Brexit, Super hard. where we literally do trade with nobody. <laughs> Right? Where we literally cut ourselves off yeah. from the from like no one's allowed in or out, right? No one's allowed to export anything or import anything. What right? about people can make stuff, but then they have to just chuck it in a big fire? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh no, you can still make stuff. You make That's it. fine. You just can't sell it to but anyone. It, but you're only allowed to sell directly to the people. Not even like Orkney or Shetland. <laughs> it has to be. You have to be able to deliver it yeah. overland, right? <laughs> That's the only... Th and then, that way, it'll encourage British businesses... That's true. ...and it'll stimulate the economy because that's all you'll be able to buy. S extra hard Brexit. And then once we've got it up and running, <laughs> we, we then start s just letting the Chinese in, maybe. <laughs> Why don't we sell Northern Ireland? <laughs> I'm joking! <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm clearly joking! This thing will genuinely go... Oh, no, I don't think we could. Well, could we? Like, but then they're thinking, I, but could we? <laughs> <laughs> that would solve the problem. Imagine, you might have, so you might have solved imagine, it. Theresa May, can we solve so it? If she, just, if she just went, there's no way out of this, and she went, listen, I've got it, right? <laughs> we just flog Northern Ireland, right? <laughs> what, to the Irish? No, sell it to the Far Never. East. You know what I mean? <laughs> we just flog it. We sell our interest. We go, well, oh, what are you going to do? Don't tell them there's a little border <laughs> issue there. Yeah, no, it's fine. Don't look at the border. <laughs> it's fine. No, it's good. Just buy this. It's lovely. It's all good. There's a lot of angry people live here. I, it's, uh... Sell it off and then use that money, <laughs> yeah. you know, to, to build the fires that we're going to chuck stuff on. <laughs> <laughs> Were the majority right when they crucified Jesus? That's my question to you. Yeah, they were. That wasn't a good example. <laughs> uh, so you, um, I've, I've never been on Question Time, have you? No, I've been asked, but yeah. I but don't fancy it. No. I think it's a bit of a poison chalice for a, you know, for a comedian as well. Yeah. Like, but also you're saying... You're saying so I've been on this week and that was not good. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I had something I wanted to talk to you about somewhere. No, it's Is it gone. written down? Um... Some of it's written down. Oh, well, who's your favourite celebrity, apart from yourself, associated with Cramlington, where you came from? <laughs> Oy. There aren't that many to choose well, from. There's a lot of footballers, is all I'd say. Well, Mark Clattenburg, the, um, okay. he's the, the referee, okay. isn't he? Um, I would say probably um, Ray Stevenson, that yes. played uh, Punisher. Um, he's, he was not from Kremlin, but he, he spent some time there. He did. And also, I would also... I mean, it's not really a celebrity, but there was a... Uh, there was a Zeppelin base there <laughs> okay. many years ago <laughs> before it became a new town. And uh, let me see, And the highest building's Manor Walk Shop Centre. <laughs> Is it good? To, it's good to know. Uh, <laughs> before you <laughs> ask. I wasn't going to ask. <laughs> right, Sting taught I the checked. Sting, Sting taught at the school, the Roman Catholic school. Yeah, but Sting taught at every school. In, like, if you, it's like, you know, I went to school with John Lennon. No, he didn't. <laughs> it's like Sting, yeah, yeah, he did. Sin, they sin, kept sin, moving around because he kept on getting <laughs> the girl standing too close to him, didn't he? <laughs> I like you wouldn't do that. You couldn't, do, you couldn't write that song now, could you? A 30-year-old man couldn't write a song about being a teacher and being upset that girls are standing too close to him at school. But wasn't that the point of well, the Well, it was, but he still was allowed to get away with it, wasn't he? I don't think you could sing, she was only 16, <laughs> only 16. No. She was too young to fall in love yeah. and I was too young to know. That uh, yeah. was the lyric. Yeah. You couldn't write that now. No. It's different times. You could write it, but you just couldn't show it to anyone. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I wonder what all them scribbles were in the back of the room. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, no, I think I think that was I think Sting was uh, yeah. Let's just look at your watch. I'm just checking. The time is <laughs> time's flown by. Yeah, yeah. So I, Sting, I think, yeah, I, think... I had him down. Ray Stevenson, who was in Rome, he played the guy in Rome, the Geordie guy in Rome. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I think Sting was it was a, a, a tale of, I think it was like a, a tale like it was a a tale of of ooh, this is bad. I don't yeah. think Sting was good. I think he was a little bit. Do you think so? Yeah, I think a little bit. Have you good. heard the story about? Tommy Cooper and Sting. No. Brilliant. <laughs> to Tommy Cooper was like... A, 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 a Sting was like a massive fan of Tommy Cooper. So he played... Uh, he got them to support the police at Milton Keynes Bowl, right? <laughs> at the height of their fame. And he'd come on stage and there was just like... Everyone just... And it, and it was at a time when Tommy Cooper wasn't held up as comedy legend. He was sort of in a, one of his lulls. And they got him to play it, and he was stood on stage, and he was getting a slow hand clapped off, and then and he's there on stage, he's got all his props, and people start throwing stuff at him, and he kept doing his act, because he, he only had to do like ten minutes, and he's smooth out, smooth out, smooth out, smooth out, smooth out, fuck off, he's throwing that, smooth out, smooth out, and all this shit's flying out of there, and gets booed off, 
and there's just shit everywhere. And apparently he walked off the stage and he turned the stick and he went, follow that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. So you're on tour. I with am. Your new show, El Hablador. I am. Yes. When's yeah. this going out? Oh, I don't know. It's probably after the tour's finished. About in about a month. All right. No, oh, I'll weeks, just. Two yeah. Weeks. All right. Yeah. No, yeah. It's the start of November. I'm back in London. Oh yeah. At the London Palladium for. Nice. Ooh, for two nights, and nice. then uh, yeah. So, but but the other, the rest of the country, if it goes out earlier. Yeah. Oh, and I'm doing ones in December. I'm on tour. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what's. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Who, are you El Hablador? Is that you? Yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> There's a big song, I've got this big song at the start yeah. that talks about the legend of El Hablador, yeah. but it turns out there is no legend of El Hablador. It's something that I've made up. Okay. And there's a song about how I've made it up okay. at the very start. It's a full audio visual spectacular. Yeah, it sounds good. And then the curt, silk curtain drops, and then I've got a giant skull, yeah. inflatable skull. About with wings about 40 foot across, nice. about 20 foot high. And I, there's a smoke machine and it lights up and flashes. And I come out of its mouth and then never mention it for the rest of the <laughs> show. <laughs> and it really makes me laugh because at the end, I do questions at the end. I say, Any questions? And then uh, some dickhead always goes, What have you got a big skull for? And I go, Because it's funny that you never mention it. And you mentioning it's made me laugh even more. So, how yeah. much did the big skull cost to make? Shit loads. Yeah. Absolutely shit loads. Yeah. I could have just had a black curtain yeah. and a swimming pool. And you've got to transport it. Does it, does it go down to a, a yeah, suitcase? It fits, yeah, it fits in a van. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's all. Good. I looked into getting inflatables for my 50 tour, then I decided just to have it painted on the back of the backdrop. Yeah. It, it, it is. was about 10 grand cheaper. Yeah. And it was the same. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have walked through it, though. Yeah, no, this is a full three-day extravaganza. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. In many ways, people have had their money's worth before I even speak. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes the pressure off the show somewhat. <laughs> you and just go, what? I'm not enjoying this. Don't <laughs> care. You've had your fun. <laughs> <laughs> And how much of it is you know what you're going to say and how much of it is you don't know what you're going to say? Entirely scripted every night, yeah, every, every word. Yeah, good. Literally every word. There's a through line and a thing. Just play with ideas, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I get an idea and then I think, oh, that's good. I'll do that tomorrow. And then I'll do the start of it and then forget to do the second <laughs> bit of it yeah. or I'll do the end of it and just smash it around. So it's, it's sort of just like... A, What's the best way of putting it? It's not like a list of jokes. It's like a load of pictures that I smash together. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's how all comedy's written, really. Yeah. Just some of us can remember what we did the night before. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't all go to fancy universities. <laughs> it's mainly what they taught me at university is how to write a, a, a through line in a comedy show. Yeah. Yeah. It isn't, writing stuff isn't, down though isn't it it's right but, got, I, don't, I never write stuff down I, I forget nearly everything yeah I, I can't bear to listen back I mean I had to listen to myself luckily it was mainly you right. today just to check we didn't talk about the same things we talked about five years ago what I've done is just talk about things that have happened in the last five years it was the easiest thing to have done uh, but instead I had to listen to you for, for, for oh, an hour and a half or talking to you for an hour and a half fucking hell unbelievable my I'm life's just, awful how do, you, how do you think my wife feels yeah She's got this shit all the time. Mine, she doesn't yeah. have to do the research. Do no, she? doesn't have to look it look yeah. up on the internet. Uh, to be fair, I only did a page and a half on you. I did loads on Amanda Abington. Yeah. Loads. But, you know, at least in two weeks' time, uh, I'll be ahead of the game on that, won't I? Uh, well, you can ask me her questions. Yeah, if I'll you ask want. you one of her questions. Yeah, go on. You play a lot of uh, police officers. Yeah. Well, why is that? Because I failed to get into the police. <laughs> okay. And I'm living out my... Uh, Fantasies. Okay. That's probably why. You have played five characters in the bill. Can you name those five characters that you have played in the bill? PC1, PC2, <laughs> PC3. No, they are. Let's see if she knows. I'll ask her that as well. Well, do you want to see it now? Because you might be listening to this. Oh, she might this. listen and then learn it, yeah. Yeah, yeah clever. But now, as she might hear that question and then go, I'm going to learn the five check. characters. Yeah. Do you remember, the, um, do you remember when uh, Paul O'Grady was in the bill? Don't remember that. Yeah, what he, did he played play? uh, uh, like a prostitute. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. played Lily Savage basically. Yeah, 
Yeah. Was that before Lily Savage or Athlete? I think so, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a fun fact about the bill. Yeah, it's good. And I think, Everyone's uh, been in the bill. Have you been in the bill? No, never. No, I've not been in the bill. We're the only two people in entertainment who've never yeah. been in the bill. I think uh, Rick Mail was in the bill, wasn't Probably he? Probably was. Yeah. Yeah. He was in the bill. Who else was in the bill? <laughs> <laughs> PC Tony Stump. <laughs> He was in it. Yeah, he was in the bill. Do you ever see that? Um, you know when they used to do when they used to do police camera action uh, before they were on the telly, and you had to buy them in shops. Do you remember that? You buy a VHS. Oh of, yes, like, yes, yes, Police yeah. chases, and I had one once. I bought this and I put it in, and it was it was the fella from the bill, and he went and he's got the full police uniform on, and he's leaning on a car, <laughs> and he goes, "Hello there, I'm PC Tony Stamp." <laughs> right. <laughs> He actually said that. I'm PC Tony Stamp. And then he paused and he took the hat off and he went, not really. I'm the actor. And then he said his name. I'm the actor who plays PC Tony Stamp. I don't know my own name and either. Then, and it was, but it was genuine. I but he took the hat off as if to go, fuck, that's not PC Tony Stamp. He's taken that. Oh my God. He's got a head. He's actually got a head under there. And there was, yeah, oh, it was brilliant. After I kept that for years, that face. Uh, there's a brilliant one where it, went, uh, it said, a group of young girls see a disgusting homeless man in the street. <laughs> he see a disgusting homeless man. They, uh, he shouts obscenities at, at them. And then uh, here they go. They go into a shop and return, and egged on by bravado and peer pressure, they attack him. With silly string. <laughs> silly string. But you go, it's silly string. <laughs> silly string. <laughs> like, what sort of string did they attack him with? Silly string. <laughs> yeah, and then there was another one. He was like a flasher, and they said, uh, oh, God, what was it? It said something like, uh, thanks to CCT. Look at this man exposing himself in the street. Now, thanks, it was because of CCTV just coming. Thanks to CCTV, you can, uh, what was it? Uh, you can mock him, shame him, or just despise him. <laughs> yes. In the comfort of your own mind. <laughs> despise him. He's sitting around, he's going, what are we going to watch tonight, love? I'd quite like to despise a flasher. Have you, have you got any despise for your chest? Let's get the despise one in. Put it in. Oh, look at that. Oh, bloody hell. It's PC. Oh, it's not PC, Tony Stan. It's not. It was just... It was incredible. Oh, yeah. I'm Alan not, Shearer, he could have had. Alan Shearer. He's not from. He li he lived there. I don't think yeah. he was. Well, he lived there. That's enough, isn't it? Yeah. All right. I'll give you that. Yeah. yeah. Alan Shearer. Who else? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Didn't Joe McKeldry? Didn't he live there for a while? Don't know who that is. He's a young person singer. Okay. He was on the X Factor. And, well, he not was... according to Wikipedia, he didn't. And I, that's that's where that's I get my information fact. from. That's all my facts. Well, I think we might have talked about this before. If you're going off Wikipedia, I was not a backing singer for the Kane Gang, <laughs> <laughs> who sang the theme to Biker Grove. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is absolutely true. Somebody's put that on Wikipedia. <laughs> no, it was not but, that. Wait, that is... like, biker, biker, <laughs> biker. <laughs> So the backing singer would just have gone, grow, <laughs> grow. What's that? Turning up to the studio. What, what, what you got for me, lads? There's the, there's the sheet. You need to go through the, grow. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Thanks. Same time next week. Yeah, we're doing. What this. they sing it live? I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, should we record this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's keep music live every week. <laughs> Every week, they would be sitting there with the bass. <laughs> yeah, and the, and, the, and the actors as well. Yeah. They used to do the... They'd film the show in advance, <laughs> but the bit where they jumped up on the trampoline, <laughs> oh, that was done live. live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever see Spuggy around in... Uh, Saw Spuggy, Spuggy once when yeah. I went to see Voyage of the Dawn Treader at the Newcastle yeah. Playhouse. Right. And, uh, was she in it? Uh, no, she no. was just sat down, down the front. <laughs> She was there and uh, somebody I was with went, Oh, Spuggy! <laughs> and you saw her go, oh. <laughs> but, yeah, but 
<laughs> she's like, you know, she's like a 45 year old woman now. <laughs> she still wanders around with people going, Help! Boogie! <laughs> Like that. There's, I'm in, I was in Biker Grove as an extra. I um, there's a, there's a, I pop up in a few. I do, I used to do quite a lot of sort of uh, extra work and stuff. I was like Spender and Biker Grove and uh, Catherine Cookson's as well. Okay. But I always used to because they were doing them so quickly. That, like I used to do little things like um, this one scene where they're down at the beach. And me and my mate had to walk past in the background. So obviously you can't do like silly things because you'll get notes, but you can do little subtle things. So what we do is we went to the, we had to walk past with these like holding ice creams. So we snapped the bottom of the cones off. So the cones were just tiny like that. And then we scooped the ice cream so it looked like we had tiny ice creams. And then, and then we just walked past the background with these, with these tiny little ice creams. And they're just going like, if Jeff finds out that we're taking drugs, the grove could close. <laughs> Walking fast in the background. And then there's, uh, there was another one. There was another one in a, in a nightclub and everyone has to, and obviously like you can't play the music because it has to just be, see, everyone has to dance silently. And there was all these like young kids, we were much older than all, all these kids, were all about 12 or something, we were like 14, 15 at the time. So we were significantly bigger than everyone else, it just looked weird. And so everyone sort of, and all these kids were just sort of standing there. And me and my mate were like really giving it, so I thought, oh, we'll definitely get seen in the background. And the, uh, the sort of AD says, right, he says, you're not dancing enough, there's music playing, so you have to, anywhere else he went, just copy what these two are doing right. <laughs> so, so we're in the club, so we're dancing around. And then as soon as they start the, the take like that, we start dancing like cowboys. So we, start, <laughs> so we do this, right? <laughs> and, then, and then I pull out like a fake gun. <laughs> like, <laughs> firing off the guns. And all of these kids are copying what we're doing. <laughs> So there's like a hoedown happening in the thing. And our ding 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 like that. <laughs> so we're doing all this. And then, and, and I sort of check to see whether, because you know, obviously if it was like a kind of a, like it was a tight shot and it's just movement in the background. That's, but it wasn't, it was like, it was <laughs> sort of like a mid shot. And they were going so quickly. So somewhere there's a, yeah, there's an episode of Biker Grove where they're in a nightclub and it's like all rave music and everyone's just doing a, <laughs> doing a hoe down and there's, there's another one there's an episode of Spender where me, me and my mate are um, we're in a, uh, like so we're behind Spender and he pulls up in his car and, but we looked at it and we sort of realised that we were pushing a it was at the, the, the airport and it had the trolley and we realised that if we we weren't going to make it into the shot because they'd started us too far back so <laughs> so the so they go like, and action, like that. And he gets out of his car, and I said, we're gonna have to get a move on here, like this. And I'm like, this is a, action, and we just start legging it, pushing the trolley, and everything's like rattling around. And the fella comes over and he just goes, you're going too fast. And I went, we're late for the flight. <laughs> Oh, a, we're, gonna, a, we're gonna have to wrap it up, Ross. Let me t let me do quick, one more. There's one more. Ah. There's a, <laughs> there's one. If we go on much longer, Amanda Abington will be able to do next year's <laughs> one. Look, there's there's another one in the uh, uh, in one of the Catherine Cookson's where there's a, a, a like a veterans hospital. They've all come back from the First World War, and they give me a bandage, and I sort of sit, I had a I had a um, uh, like a dressing gown on and they sat me in this wheelchair and the and the uh, main character it's Catherine Zeta Jones was in this one and they, they had to walk past like that and there's all these like you know wounded soldiers and that and they sort of gave me a bandage around my head so I thought because no one's looking at the extras really it's just shapes in the background so I took the bandage off and instead of having it round my head I tied it under my chin <laughs> and then <laughs> like, Tied it on the top, you know, like Laurel and Hardy when they've got the, <laughs> and they've got too thick like that, and then, and then I sat there like that, and then I was perfectly still, and as they walked past, I started dribbling and rocking. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so somewhere. <laughs> so if you, and every now and again, it'll be on like, you know, like ITV3 uh, or whatever, you know, classic drama and all the rest of it. And you see like, it's Clive, Clive Owen or Lloyd Owen or one of them. And he says, well, yes, we've got to get back to the front. And like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, got to start somewhere, haven't you? <laughs> Basically, what you did in uh, Young Frankenstein, so you're off. Exactly. The same. Uh, yes. For Olivier nominated comedian. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up. Fantastic guest, Rob Thank you for coming back. Thank you so much. Cheers, thank you. We'll be back next week. Who knows who we are? Go and buy some stuff. Come back there. Thank you very much. See you in a bit. What is the smelliest or loudest burp you ever did? What a brilliant question. That one's for kids, but adults can use it too. Emergency questions. Go and buy it right now. And also, thank you to our sponsor, Beer52. If you want eight free craft beers for just £2.95 package and posting, go to beer52.com slash Rahalastapa and sign up and then you can get your beers. They'll be delivered to you. You can bunk off as soon as you get them or you can stay in and get eight more every month, different beers for just £24. It's a fantastic company. I would, um, and you can get drunk drinking the beer. It's good. Anyway, thanks for watching and listening and or both. See you. <laughs>